Thornton, the wide receiver, Lynn Swan, is not in there. We'll see him, of course. Randy Grossman is the tight end, replacing an injured Benny Cunningham, who was up to a great year until hurt two weeks ago against Atlanta. John Stallward, he's meant a lot to Terry Bradshaw. Number 82, really came into his own last year and is scintillating once again this year. All right, they mark it at the 18, so it'll be second down, a long eight. Quick toss, and goes to Franco Harris. Harris, the big man with the great agility, gets close to the 25-yard line. Pick up of six. It'll be third down and two. Franco Harris loves to play on Monday night. We'll take another look at the agility that Frank just mentioned. For a big man, nobody turns the corner back. And look at that, right there. Harris, in eight Monday night games, has gained over 800 yards, and five of them more than 100 yards. And 1975, remember Howard against Houston? He went for 149 yards. He loves the pressure, loves the big games. Franco Harris, third down and two. Bradshaw on a third and two. Wide open with number 82, Stallworth. And he was open from the time he left the line of scrimmage. He has the first down of the 38. Kurt Mock made the stop, but there was a mix-up in the defense, and we'll take a look at that defense. They're tough, and they come at you from all angles. Sometimes they'll make the mistakes. The man in the middle, you know, from years of play, Curly Colt, Jim Young is at one end, Alvin Bethea the other end. They're your linebackers. Probably no better linebacker, at least in terms of hitting, than Robert Brazil. The defensive secondary. The Steelers with a first down and 10. The ball up there, 38-yard line. Lance Swan back in the game. He wears number 88, of course. Bradshaw inside hand off Franco Harris. And Franco Harris goes down, but not until he rolls out for a six-yard pickup to the 43-yard line. The man at the bottom, 65, Elvin Bethay. Well, he had an inch-like opening, and that was all he needed because after that, in the manner of Larry Zonka, when Zonka was in his prime, he forces the rest on his own. This man in his 11th year, still all pro caliber, Elvin Bethay, Franco Harris, the seventh leading rusher now in the history of the NFL. Swan goes to the right, Stallworth in motion, Bradshaw back, deep drop, a lot of protection, fires to Lynn Swan and overthrows. Lynn Swan was open for a brief moment, but Willie Alexander recovered and was all over him. Well, the crowd is booing because Swan really got it after the play was over. Swanee has been through this before. Once, he suffered such a serious concussion that it was thought he would quit the game prematurely based upon his age. Look right there. And that's why the crowd was booing. But Swan, though smallish and lithe, is terribly durable. He'll fool you. And you have to double up on him, really, to cover him. And then if you double up on Stallworth, that leaves the tight end loose. Right, Frank? Indeed. Third down six. Rather, third down four. Clock is not working. We'll try and keep you abreast of the clock. But right now, but it's not working. Third. Stallworth is there and makes that beautiful diving catch at the 15-yard line. Then John Stallworth. And we told you he's having a great year. And he is doing that. He's providing Lynch Swan with single coverage for the first time in many years because they have to be concerned with this man, number 82. Here he is. He just has great speed. He just flat outran Greg Stenrick. Which is, as we have still another look at this play, which is exactly why Stallworth has become so vital to this team. Plays like that, they double up on him. Swanee, you can't cover one-on-one -on -one and vice versa. A pair of sensational wide receivers. And a graphic illustration of the kind of year that Bradshaw is having. A beautifully thrown book. Franco Harris runs into number 54. That's Greg Bingham. Bingham isn't one of those famous linebackers, Giffer, but he's one of the most effective. He leads Houston in unassisted tackles. The linebackers led them a year ago. Although Brazil, as you noticed, is the publicized one and a great one. Also an all-pro. From his inside position, Bingham stripped across the line of scrimmage, read the play, a yard and a half loss. It'll be second down. Call it a long nine, a rather long 11. Sidney Thornton back in again. He wears number 38. But Blyer gets the call. And Blyer runs into the arms of Willie Alexander, and down he goes. Putting back to the original line of scrimmage and inside the 15 for a pickup of about two. It'll be third down and nine. 
Rocky Flyer. Uh, of course, the story that's been often repeated. Came up a 16th round draft pick. Years ago, 68. Didn't think he could make the team. Went to Vietnam, wounded, came back. Took him six years before he became a starter here at the Steelers. And he's been a steady performer, and Franco Harris will tell you that he's responsible with his blocking for many of the yards that he's gained. Third and nine. Under obvious pressure, you saw it. Bradshaw had to hurry his throw a little bit. There's Swanee. There was a safety blitz on that play. And now watch Lynn as he goes into the middle, post pattern. And it looked like it might have been caught, but not with all that pressure on Swanee. Not even Gifford could have caught that in his front. Well, not a confused Bradshaw. You saw Stallworth was there, and I can tell you for sure they shouldn't have both been there. Roy Girella will attempt a 31-yard field goal. He's 6 of 12 of the year. Steelers fans expect. So the game remains scoreless. We'll tell you about the time as soon as we know. Just being too easy going. Doesn't scrimmage his team in the preseason. He says, why do that? Houston's not on our schedule. Let them get hurt against the other guys we play. First and ten, the Oilers. Torella missed from 31 yards out. The game is scoreless. 5-25. We're told remaining in the first quarter. This is Earl Campbell. And the big man up as he gets out close to the 24 yard line for a gain of four it'll be second and six white white was over there lambert was over there look at that graphic it was lambert who made the initial hit by the way that tells the story of earl campbell he's played in six games 608 total yards pretty good for a rookie there watch 58 he fought off one block pursued the play laterally and was in on it to help stop Second and sixth, the ball at the 24-yard line. Rob Carpenter. Carpenter, with some nifty footwork, gets out of a bind at the line of scrimmage and moves out close to the 28-yard line. A couple of yards short of a first down. It'll be third and two again. Lambert and Mike Wagner on the stop. There's more versatility in this Houston backfield than one would have expected. It's not just Earl Campbell. Campbell was on the sidelines in a recent Houston victory over Cleveland. Carpenter came in at one point. Together with Ronnie Coleman, he provided spark and life and helped lead Houston to a 16-13 victory. Third and two. The three tight ends are in, if you want to call Rich Castor a tight end. And off goes to number 26, Rob Carpenter, and it so often does on short yardage with everyone at the line of scrimmage. He found the opening, popped it for a first down at the 40-yard line, taken by Mike Wagner there. And let's look again, because it is a play that happens very often. You get just a little crease, and the linebackers, of course, down at the line of scrimmage. No one to fill the hole. There you see the miss by Lambert. Wagner makes the save, and that could have been a bunt. First and 10, the Oilers, their own 40-yard line. Pastorini passing at just under 54% of the year, but his biggest credential, only five times has he been sacked. And four of those came in the first game. Campbell is down at the 43, and a flag is down. They look like motion against Rob Carpenter. Which, if Frank is accurate in that call, and I believe he is, will temporarily slow this Houston beginning drive. And they're doing it on the ground. And the Pittsburgh coaching staff, led by Chuck Knoll, knows very well that if there's a way to play Pittsburgh representatively and hope to beat them, it's through the ground game. They've been so strong against the pass, but teams that can run, and the Jets, for instance, played them very representatively. It was 28 to 17, and closer than that score indicated. Offense illegal motion number 26. Took time out for the call from the official. The Jets did it all on the ground against Pittsburgh with backup quarterback Matt Robinson eschewing the pass. The motion call, it was against Carpenter, his first and 15, the ball at the 35-yard line. Mike Barber, the tight end, split. He's at the top of your screen. And off Carpenter, and Carpenter tripped up at right at the line of scrimmage. Lambert moving across, and we talked about Kenny Burrow as Pastorini finds himself in the passing situation. There is a man that has a great deal of respect for Ken Burrow, too. This man with a great record. Well, Chuck Knoll has to be respected, as does his owner, Art Rooney. He came here, took over a moribund situation. They built this team from within via the draft. 
The 71 draft provided a foundation of great stars. Ball would have come late. It's a fine coach. Second and 15. Steelers threaten the blitz and then pull out of it. Earl Campbell gets the call and moves out to the 41-yard line. Back to the original line of scrimmage. At about a half a yard picked up, so it's going to be third and long. And the point I was trying to make a moment ago was that Howard touched on it earlier. Ken Burrow has scored 25 touchdowns in his career, nine years. And the average length of a touchdown catch has been over 50 yards. That's double O. He can really fly. 6'3", a 210-pounder. And right now, Pastorini puts him to the left. Well, Billy White shoots Johnson in the slot. And out to the right is Mike Renfro. Single setback. Another good receiver, Ronnie Coleman. Third and nine. White shoes in motion. Wide open. Number 47, Ronnie Coleman. So the special offensive set on the part of the Oilers pays off as the Oilers move for a first down of the 36-yard line of the Steelers. No score in the game. Well, Ronnie Coleman's a kid you've got to respect. Alabama A&M, quarterback. In fact, John Stallworth's quarterback at college. He came in as a free agent. Nobody gave him a chance. But he got action immediately, and he, re he produced immediately. This is a good running back. Had to take a back seat to Campbell, but when Campbell was out, absolutely scintillated. First and 10, the Oilers. Their deepest penetration. Carpenter in motion, Campbell to hand off. Big hole and hurdles over the line of scrimmage, and a flag goes down as Campbell is taken at the 31-yard line, hit there by Lauren Taves. 59 Jack Ham. There was a gain of five, but it's going to be against the Oilers. Coming in, Earl Campbell averaging a little over 101 yards per game. Here's our call. Offensive holding number 73. First down. Greg Sampson, the left tackle, number 73, holding for Houston, and it moves the ball back to the 47-yard line. They're still adjusting the scoreboard clock. We're inside two minutes remaining in the first quarter. No score. Jarella missed the 31-yard attempt. The Oilers now with a holding call in trouble. They have first down and 21. Rob Carpenter, single setback. The motion man, double-O, Ken Burrow. Pastorini, screen, Carpenter. And Carpenter taken by Jack Ham, but he's close to a first down, down at the 26-yard line. He may have it, Giff, and we told you about Carpenter. He is no third-rate substitute. He can fire up a team. Look at this again. Perfectly executed screen, Frank, looking right, going left, and with blockers in front of him, he left his blocking group and cut back and made it work. It is a first down. The 26-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Campbell comes back in on the first down. In there, set back with Rob Carpenter. Carpenter, left side, and hit there by number 76. Banizak at number 58, to Jack Lambert. Gain of a couple, it'll be second down and eight. Well, Pittsburgh, as a matter of record, you look at that graphic, top rookie rusher in the National Football League last season, 652 yards. That should tell you something of the young man's ability. Well, Pittsburgh has been most successful on Monday nights, winning seven and losing three. Houston has in the past been notoriously unsuccessful. I hope tonight will change the past trend. Second and eight. Ball marked inside the 25-yard line. Approaching the end of the first quarter, Campbell takes to the right, cuts back, tries to put the ball forward. But they will mark it just outside the 20-yard line, short of the first down by about three, four yards. It'll be third and that. You saw an interesting reflex there. He had a little bit of cuteness and cunning on that, trying to move the ball forward, and then the sudden panic. Will I lose it? Will they call it a fumble? So quickly he brought it back. Great young man, not only a gifted football player, as the gun announces the end of the first quarter, a scoreless first quarter, so the Steelers' scoreless record for first quarters remains intact. We'll be back, Three River Stadium, Pittsburgh, after this. The undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers have only lost two games since Three River Stadium opened in 1970 to Central Division opponents, both of them to the Houston Oilers in 70 and 74. They're playing the Oilers tonight, the scoreless, as we begin the second quarter, it's third and five. The Oilers have the football, 20-yard line of the Steelers. 
Campbell, single setback, number 34, gets the call, a fake, that is, and around comes number 88, Rich Castor. Castor gets to the nine-yard line, first down, good play action on the part of Campbell. Pastorini tucked it away, gave it to the big man, acquired from the Jets, as you probably know, earlier in the year, a three-time pro bowler for the Jets, and still a lot of football player left in this man. Look at it again. Castor used to run this play for the Jets on occasion. The thing about Castor is he has an antelope-like stride. He covers more ground, being a very tall man, six, five and a half, with one stride than faster men can cover in one and a half. First and goal. The quick toss. Rob Carpenter, a pursuing defense, headed by Joe Green, who misses, but he's up in by number 29. And that's the rookie from Eastern Michigan, Ron Johnson, but not until he rolls down to the eight-yard line where it remained second and goal. Here's the young man. He's short. He's 5'10", but he has a lot of qualities about him, one being that he has good speed and he likes to hit. He's a good, hard football player, a very physical football player, and if you follow the Steelers, you know that's what they like. Second and goal. Carpenter needing Campbell. Campbell, let's boom ahead and look at that. 227 pounds, and can he accelerate? He gets down close to the two-yard line. He's just a remarkable athlete to watch. He's more than just a running back. He's a great athlete. And he had 26 yards gained going into this play. So he's added notably to it. Good block by 76 Morris Towns and Conway Heyman to make it happen. There it is again, and just acceleration and good strength. I'm glad you mentioned Mo Towns, second year man from Missouri, number 78. 76. On third down, Campbell. They're saying he got it in the end zone. He broke the plane, touchdown Houston. Wait a minute. Yes. Headlinesman right on the goal line, and Earl Campbell remains on the ground. He was really hit as he put the head down. Gave it everything he had. Got into the end zone. Broke that plane. That's all he had to do. Let's look at it again. Getting a block from number 60, Ed Fisher. And collides head on with number 29, Ron Johnson. And Mike Wagner also there. Let's take a look at it again. It's just a run for a daylight play. Moving to the outside. Getting all zone blocking. And then turning it in. He's on his feet now. Yep, just got the field. wind knocked out of him, Frank. And Frank, you've called two names, Mo Towns and Ed Fisher. And right there is the reason for the Houston performance thus far tonight. Not just the excellence of the backs, because they don't do it by themselves, but the way this Houston offensive line is coming along this year is a positive thing of joy to Bum Phillips and everybody connected with the Houston organization. As you look at Earl, you can see he's all right. I think he probably was just stunned. I we will not speculate, but he's off on his own feet, and that's always a good sign. He gets the touchdown. Out comes Tony Fritch. A head on collision with Ron Johnson. Helmet on helmet. The Campbell got into the end zone. It is on the scoreboard first, and Fritch makes it seven to nothing Houston over the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, look at that play again. There's Pastorini, the handoff to Camp. Note the way he huddles that football, puts his head down, bangs in there. That's what resulted in the hurt, the football, into his stomach or lower chest. In any event, Camp was okay. Houston leads, will be back. Steeler rookie Larry Anderson, who went 95 yards for a touchdown against the Browns last week, awaits the kick of Tony Fritz. Fritz hangs it high. Anderson drops the ball and picks it up at the five and sets sail. Trouble. Anderson got into trouble. Ran into a host of Oilers. Turned around, you saw it, and got out to the 32-yard line. Nifty return. I'll tell you, that return was made possible by number 38, Sidney Thornton, who leveled the key block. Watch it again, Frank, and you'll see it. 
That was the fumble. The main thing, Hart, he did not flip because he had a great opportunity right. to flip. He let it set up. You'll see it right here. Exactly right. Now, and that springs Anderson to the 32-yard line. First and 10 Steelers. Here comes Rocky Blyer. Michael Harris with a block out front, and Blyer pounds out to the 37-yard line, getting five yards. It'll be second and five. The word on Campbell is that he had the wind knocked out of him. He'll be going back. Frank and I had both feared perhaps a mild concussion because when he went to the well, bench. Let me tell you, they don't look in your eyes for the wind knocked out of you. That's what we both observed when he was on the bench. Second and five. Sowers the split left, Lynn Swan to the right. The quick toss, Franco Harris. And Harris accelerates and explodes out to the 45-yard line. First down, Steelers. Ted Washington made the stop for the Houston Oilers. So much to be said about this man and his career, and it's not all that long. He's now in his seventh year, 29 games, over 100 yards. Only two players in the history of pro football have better records than that. Jim Brown with 58, O.J. with 42, and Franco, of course, just keeps rolling along. Can run inside, he can run outside. Cindy Thornton, number 38, now comes in. Franco gets a breather. Thornton wears number 38. Blyer bent right at the line of scrimmage. Actually, that was the three setback offense that Chuck Noll likes to go with. So it'll be second down and 10. We'll tell you this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. Scoreboard clock indicates that we're inside 12 minutes remaining in the first half. The Oilers leading 7-0. The Steelers have the football, their own 45-yard line. Second and 10, Bradshaw's back. Fires over the middle, complete to the tight end. Randy Grossman, number 84. Grossman short of the first down. He had to get to the 45, he did not. Robert Brazil made the stop. You know, one of the reasons, Howard, for Terry Bradshaw getting off to a great start was the play of the man we mentioned earlier, Benny Cunningham, Benny Cunningham, who is out of the lineup now. And he was having a super year until he was hurt a couple of weeks ago against Atlanta. And he should be gone for another four or five weeks. And Randy Grossman back in there now doing the work. The other tight end, of course, a good play there, Larry Brown, who's been playing tackle, and he is hurt and can't play tonight. Third and short, Franco Harris gets the ball, the flag is down. Harris has the first down. More as he goes close to the 40 yard line, upended by Reinfeldt, but a flag is down at the line of scrimmage. And it'll be against the Oilers. <laughs> what a piece of work. He came in 1975, got himself a quick 10 4 season. 76, they went back to 5 and 9. Last year, 8 6. First down. He was not exactly inscrutable on the sidelines there. Oh, he's a lot of fun. Well, he is. He has some great sayings. Been around football all his life. Folks in a whole bunch of places. Texas and El Paso, SMU, Texas A&M, San Diego. First down and 10. Franco Harris, quick toss. Cut back as he does so well, drops the football. Hustling over there, I believe, is Sam Davis. What a job Sam Davis has done. A veteran of 34, he surpassed Chuck Knowles' expectations. He's part of what I meant when I talked about the work of the offensive line of the Steelers at the very top of the telecast. Remember, they traded Jim Clack. In fact, they made three big trades to Steelers, and they were all bombs. Hey, this is a team that relies on the draft. When they turn to the trade, they make profits for themselves. A gain of two. Franco Harris and Davis is second down and eight. Bradshaw finds Grossman wide open over the middle. And Bradshaw comes right back with the play that's worked for him. Mike Reinfeldt made the stop, as he did before, but they're laying off Randy Grossman. He's not considered an outstanding receiver, and Bradshaw senses it, picks it up, and goes right to him. And any time now, they'll pay more attention to the tight end than Terry might be throwing to Mr. Swan. Sidney Thornton, Rocky Flyer, Franco Harris. Swan comes out of the game in this particular set. John Stallworth split to the left. Thornton, you 
you see the bottom of your screen in a wing position on first and ten. Hand off goes to Rocky Blyer and Blyer upended. Get there by number 18, Willie Alexander, but not before he picks up a couple of yards. It'll be second down and eight. Frank has told you what we all know about Rocky, about the war career, about the six years of fighting to be recognized on this team. There's more to him than that. He'll fool you as a runner. He's had a number of hundred-yard gains. And as a human being, his work for multiple sclerosis has been just exceptional. Of course, we'll be having our big dinner tomorrow night in New York City. On second down and eight. Swan's wide open. <laughs> Touchdown. Uh -huh. So that was inevitable. We called it two plays ago. He was out for one play, back in, and that superb combination that we picturized at the very opening of the telecast. Still another touchdown. Willie Alexander trying to offer the coverage, but again, when Lance Swan is running a pass pattern down around the goal line, one thing Terry Bradshaw knows is the squad's going to go for it with everything he's got. Great little competitor. Gets the six points. Roy Girello will attempt to tie it up. Alexander went all the way with it, looked up, saw Bradshaw rolling out, left Swan, six points to Steelers, and we'll be right back. And who would have thought, with the exception of alumnus Chris Shakel, that Purdue at this point in the season will be leading the Big Ten. College football coming your way on Saturday. He had me sold. That's the Steelers scoring drive. Two tough teams. Notice how poisonly Pittsburgh came back from the Houston touchdown. Billy Johnson is deep for Houston. Dorella. It. It'll be Billy Johnson from his 14-yard line. <laughs> a little one with all the moves that did not pay off this time is Sidney Thornton, a great special teams player, would not be fooled. Johnson goes down at the 23-yard line where it'll be first and 10. And Sidney Thornton, number 38, Chuck Knoll is on record as saying that he could be the best blocking running back in football if he wanted to be, and apparently Sidney does. What a great pair of this is. Swan, his sixth touchdown of the season. His 36th reception. He's having a super year along with Bradshaw. First and 10, Houston. The game is tied up if you just joined us. Seven apiece. Earl Campbell back in the game. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Stop there. Big number 76. Banizek was there. Dwight White, number 78. Well, they unloaded Ernie Holmes. Banasak has temporarily beaten out Steve Furness, though there's some controversy about that because Furness is probably the better pass rusher. But Banasak has proved himself over the last three years. And by the way, our congratulations to him and his bride. His bride had a new baby a week ago today. They give Campbell about a half a yard, second down, long nine. It's Wilson, Tim Wilson, and oh, and this is what the Steelers fans like. Just a complete collapsing defense. 75, Joe Green, 78, White, White. Manizak, as Howard mentioned, trying to maintain a job that he really took over when Furness was hurt, warming up for the very first game of the season. You saw the sign we referred to earlier, the Steel Kirk. They're the ones who really fire up this Pittsburgh crowd. More even then Bradshaw and Swan and Franco and Rocky and Stolberg. Third and eight as Pastorini looks over an awesome sight. Meaning, of course, Green, Banizak, Greenwood, and Dwight White. And we're going to change the football. Sometimes ball carriers and receivers will get a little sticky substance on it. The center doesn't like it. And we change the ball. Third and eight. Strong arms at the Pastorini to Mike Barber, and Barber drops the football. And the Steeler has the ball. Donnie Shell. Jack Hand was all over Mike Barber. And what an opportunist 
terrific player he is. He will get that football out of there if he gets the opportunity. That's true, but Houston is arguing that the ball was dead. However, the officials rule otherwise. And Donnie Shell, now look at Bob. He's talking to the officials right now, claiming the ball was dead. Of course, it's a judgment call, and we've had so many of those this year. Look at Bob. Hassels and Rhubarbs. The Steelers' offensive unit is on the field. Let's take a look at it again. Pastorini drills it out to Barber. Now, you'll see him then go into the arms of Jack Ham. There he is, Ham all over him. And, well, I don't think he was dead. Uh, I don't think so either. Bob was still the fighting for yards. The Steelers have a first and ten. They'll be at the 25-yard line of Houston. Bum is upset. We'll be right back. Let's take a look at that play a moment ago, and you saw Bum Phillips. He was upset, but had he been a little more convinced, I think that this was an illegal play, he'd have been much more upset. Here is Mike Barber, Jack Ham. Here comes Wagner. Wagner just knocks the ball out as Barber continued to struggle for yardage. No whistle had been blown. The Steelers have the football, 25 yard line of the order. Key point is that Barber was still struggling for yardage, and we told you about the way Wagner's been playing this year. He's the one who knocked the ball loose. Michelle to pick it off. Frank. Thornton in, Swan out, three big man offense. Inside handoff, Sidney Thornton. And Thornton upended. Hit there by Robert Brazil. Gets about a yard, and it's second and nine. That's Donnie Shell. Good to see you, buddy. He's a happy man. You know, know like, how to make room for him. That's why they got rid of Edwards. You know, he's a lot like, he used to be nothing but special teams, like Benny Barnes, who we're going to see against Minnesota Thursday night at the Dallas Cowboys. They're just so good, both of them. Donnie Shell, you just saw. Benny Barnes of the Cowboys. They finally had to put him in there on a permanent basis. They earned it on special teams. Second and nine. Swan back in, but this is Franco Harris. Harris turns the corner, turns on a burst of speed, gets the first down as he rolls down inside the 13-yard line. Off took him out of bounds. What a beautiful run by Franco. He was going to cut back inside the outside defender. But quickly, he noticed that the way to go was outside, and that's the one of the great things, one of the keys to Harris's excellence. Now watch this. Going to cut back. No, there was the block. He took advantage of it, and the quick acceleration, and a lot of yardage, good enough for a first down. What a play. That was Ray Penny, who was filling in a right tackle for an injured Larry Brown that made the block to sprung Franco. The ball is just about the 12-yard line. First and 10, Franco again. Follows number 55, the block of John Coleman rolls out of bounds. This time he'll lose a yard. As Steve Kiner, the inside linebacker, moved over to force him out of bounds. You know, Frank, in your call, you said that was Ray Finney who made the block, filling in for Larry Brown. And unless one is a close student of professional football, the name just falls by the wayside. But not to Chuck Knoll and the whole personnel department of the Steelers. He was their top draft choice out of Washington four years ago. He's in his fourth year now, and he is a fine, fine player. Second down and 11. Bradshaw, both backs in, tries to go out to Stallworth, and under pressure has to dump it off. The Oilers taking a page from the Steelers. Look, they come with the safety blitz. Mike Reinfeldt coming in, forcing Bradshaw to hurry the pass incomplete. Third down and 11. T.O. Bell comes in. He wears number 83. Single setback, Franco Harris. So your receivers are Bell, Swan, and Stalwart. This one will be up in the air. Bell, top of your screen. Stalwart in the slot. Should have been thrown much better than that because he was really wide open, and Terry's got to be upset with himself. I can't believe I just saw a smile on Chuck Knoll's face. Just crossed his lips. I don't know if you noticed it. There's the play again. <laughs> There's John all by himself. Perfect throw. Oh, well. He could have caught it, but he, again, was concentrating on making both of those feet stay in bounds. Incomplete. Jarrell is on 30-yard attempt. Earlier, he missed from 31 yards out. He's 6 of 13 on the year. 
perfect. Garella puts the Steelers out in front for the first time tonight. A little over five minutes, we are told, remaining in the first half. That's the score. We'll be back. Pittsburgh takes a 10-7 lead over the Houston Oilers. The Steelers undefeated on the season. The Oilers with a 4-3 and three mark. They feel it should be better. This is a man who scares the life out of people on special teams. Billy Watches Johnson. He's returned a couple of kickoffs in his career, as you can see. He's returned five punts for touchdowns. 15th round draft pick. But this time, it's going to be Johnny Dearden. And he moves out to the 23-yard line, taken there by Robin Cole. Watching Pittsburgh in this game certainly is far from over. Watching Pittsburgh, you can see a team that feels so secure in its ability, so sure of itself. And there's the fulcrum for the team, the hot quarterback, Terry Bradshaw. It's as Swanee said, Frank. You know, I had a couple of years of being an also in, and that's not my bag. <laughs> Isn't a bag for anyone. Not in this game. First and ten. Pastorini, five and five, 42 yards. They trail by three. This is Earl Campbell. Campbell swarmed under Taves, number 51, who had some problems in the early going. He I wonder, a, Frank, how much Campbell's been affected by that hit he got when he scored the touchdown. We've already mentioned that we observed them with the light to his forehead when he went over to the bench. Although it was reported to us that it was just a loss of wind. Goodness knows. Well, we're not medical diagnosticians. No, but I've looked at a lot of flashlights on the bench. It doesn't affect too much. Or they wouldn't be having they wouldn't have him in there now. Second and ten. Pastorini, good block. Well, Pastorini attempting to go to Mike Grinfro, incomplete. And this Mike Grinfro, number 82, has been quite a story for this Oilers. You might recall uh, well, about 20 years ago, he had a father who played for the Cleveland Browns named Ray Renfro, <laughs> now in the insurance and real estate business down in Fort Worth. And he has to be mighty proud of this youngster because he just tore up the Southwest Conference for three years at TCU, breaking all kinds of records. And he has become quite a little football player. Interesting the way they got him. They were really lucky. They got him on the fourth round. Sometimes you can steal on the fourth round. Witness Miami getting Nat Moore, number 89, on the fourth round. Pastorini looks over the defense, doesn't like it, changes off on third and ten. Because he was getting a blitz and he wanted to go deep. This is Ken Burrow. And you won't see Burrow drop that very often. But Pastorini, a heads-up call. He read the blitz. He knew Burrow would be man for man. Indeed, he was. And Burrow just couldn't hold on as Pastorini had to let the ball go. And a flag is down now. It's going to be roughing the passer as we look again. The most difficult pass there is the catch. Right back over your shoulder. But it was a great throw, and Burrow shows his speed. He's working against Mel Blunt there, and you all know that Mel Blunt has been a great defensive back throughout his career. And while we were watching the artistry, the Pittsburgh Steelers were penalized for roughing the passer. Defense, personal foul, roughing the passer, number 31, first down. The blitz man, Donnie Shell, who's had three sacks already this far this year. He was guilty, hitting late. In defense of Mel Blunt, when you're in a blitz like that, they play that receiver very tight because they know the passer is not going to have time to release it. First and ten, the ball at the 38-yard line. Oilers down, 10 to 7, Pastorini. Looks over and finds Tim Wilson, and Wilson collects the ball out to the 46-yard line, and he's collected by Jack Lambert, number 58, and Pastorini down again in the arms of Dwight White. He really went down. Look at it again. Now, Pastorini, watch Dwight White. You'll see him, 78, coming at him. And down went Pastorini. Pastorini's often been accused throughout his career as not having touch, and that's probably true. When touch, you mean knowing when to loft the ball, throw it softly, knowing when to rifle it. But he is much better at diversifying his receivers. Wilson gets eight on that reception, his second down and two, the ball at the 46. Campbell, or rather Tim Wilson gets the call. He's close to a first down, I believe he has it. Tim Wilson, a second year old man out of Maryland. He was a first round draft pick last year. Had over 340 yards as a rookie. Mainly a blocker in Maryland. 
The Oilers organization thought this man can run the football as well, and they took him in the first round. The Oilers down by three. The ball just short of midfield. 325, at least on the scoreboard clock remaining in the first half. Pastrini wanted to release it more quickly than he did. He overthrows Ken Burrow, and he had a feeling that Burrow crossed him up a little bit there because he's upset. Flag is down. And it's going to be called against the Houston Oilers. Um, Phillips with the chaw on his jaw, looking on. Never can tell he's from Texas. Ben Dry. The referee marks it off, and now he'll give us the word. Offense, pass interference number 34. First down. Earl Campbell, who tried to slip through from his fullback spot, he's guilty of offensive pass interference. Down remains the same as first and 20. The ball is back close to the 40-yard line of the Oilers. Burrows split to the left. Rich Castro is in the lineup. He's in the slot. Castro over the middle. He's open, gets back to the line of scrimmage, and he's Dropped immediately by Donnie Shell. Back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be second down. Well, he picks up nine, so it'll be second down and 11. You've got to keep your eye on Richard Castor when he's in there because he is a superb deep receiver when he holds on to the football. One of his problems with the Jets was dropped football. He seems to catch the most difficult of passes and drops the ones that are right in his hands. That was his history in New York. Second and 11, Pastorini. This could be a lateral. No, they are going to call that an incompleted pass, and it was close to a lateral, and Lambert is upset. Well, Lambert was trying to run the football in, and of course you can't do that. It becomes a dead ball. Even if it's ruled a lateral, the ball is dead at the point of recovery. Here it is. It's a screen to Campbell. Very close. The official right on the spot says no. Incomplete. Third down and 11. Pastorini knows he's going to attract the crowd now. The Oilers bring in their offensive specialists on passing situations. That means Ronnie Coleman will be the setback. There he is. Single setback. Billy Johnson comes in. Number 84. Rich Castor's in 88. And Ken Burrow, double zero. Pastorini dumps it off to Burrow under pressure and Pastorini is nailed again as he releases the football. It was badly executed from all points. Pastorini himself and Burrow, the intended receiver, didn't have first down distance. So as I said, badly executed. And Houston will have to give up the football. The intended receiver, Billy White, choose Johnson. Pastorini looked up, saw Mel Blunt all over Johnson, ran out of the pocket, dumped it off, fourth down. Cliff Parsley will punt. Deep is Randy Rudishan along with T.O. Bell. Rudishan 40, Bell is 83. Parsley hangs it high. It'll be T.O. Bell from his 14-yard line. Falls forward to the 26. A good tackle by Art Stringer, or that could have been a long run by T.O. Bell. Time is out. We'll be back in Pittsburgh in a moment. The Dallas Cowboys, of course, tied with Washington in the National Conference's Eastern Division. We'll be there as they go against the Minnesota Vikings. And the little old man did it again. He just keeps fooling the folks. I speak of Fran Tarkenton. Big day yesterday. Upset over Green Bay. Francis, three touchdowns. We'll look forward to seeing him against the Cowboys. Flyer. Bang. Is he Approaches the line of scrimmage, number 65, Elvin Bethea, and number 52, Robert Brazil. I'll tell you, Robert Brazil will give you a pop. Hey, well. Two-minute warning. That means we have another time out as we look at Dan Pastorini on the sidelines, and we'll be returning to Three River Stadium in a moment. Three timeouts remaining for both teams. Two minutes remaining. The Steelers have the football. Second down and 11. The ball up there. 25-yard line. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell reporting for Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. 
Pittsburgh is constructed like Dallas. Only two men on the team not obtained by way of the draft or free agency. Jack Mandich and Roy Jarella, the two. You remember, I mean, Jim Mandich, you remember Jim with the Miami Dolphins. Second and 11. Inside handoff, Franco Harris. And Harris pounds out much of it on his own to the 30-yard line. Pick up a Ford, and it'll be third down and six. Jack Mandich. I had in mind Jack Manders. Do you remember Jack Manders, Frank? Indeed, I do. You do? Yes. You're older than I thought. Played against him. <laughs> <laughs> Franco Harris having another big night. He just seems to like to turn it on. As we pointed out earlier on, in eight Monday night games with the Steelers, five times he's been over 100 yards. And, of course, he had that big 149-yarder in 75 against his very same team, the Houston Oilers. Franco Harris, single setback. Bradshaw goes right home to Mother. A lot of time, and Swan does not hold on as he's popped by number Willie Alexander on, well, you could call it a get-even play because Willie has to be embarrassed about that touchdown that Swan got from him a moment ago. But, you know, he can jump like no one I've ever seen his size, Howard. You see him on that obstacle course when you had him in the Superstars and I had him in the Battle of Network Stars. We learned that about him quickly. Can't blame him for dropping that one, though. Not with Alexander all over. Good defensive play. Colquitt, the third round draft pick of the Steelers this year, will punt. Billy Johnson is deep. And this will have time to set up. No, good defensive play. It was Rocky Blyer hustling down there. And Steelers also getting help from Larry Anderson. Inside two minutes, one minute, one second remaining on the clock. That's if we can trust that clock. I still don't really, although we've had assurances that it's working. Well, it was official at the two-minute warning. So <laughs> we'll see. The Oilers, fairly good field position. Ball at their own 37-yard line. They have three timeouts. They trail by three points, 10-7. Rob Carpenter, 26. Earl Campbell, 34 of the setbacks. Mike Renfro, 82. Kimberl, double zero, the wide receivers. Astorini throws it away. Ham all over the intended receiver was Earl Campbell, and a flag goes down. You know, you watch Jack Ham, and you just marvel at his ability to read the plays, as we see the Steelers will be assessed a penalty for a face mask, but just a remarkably gifted athlete. 23. Same thing with Jack Lambert. Defense and face mask number 68. That's a first down. I'll tell you, Frank, the Giants got a guy on the fourth round a couple of years ago, a middle linebacker named Harry Carson, who is destined for absolute greatness. He is as good an athlete, I think, as there is in the entire league. He is one fine linebacker. We have another one there, too, Brad Van Tuff. Giants have added a few more bricks. They're on their way back. On the first and ten, over the middle, complete to Rob Carpenter. Short of the first down as he moves out to the 49. A pickup of seven. It'll be second down and three. Jack Lambert made the stop. The preceding announcement was brought to you by Rocky Blyer and the National Football League as a public service. Second down and three for the Oilers. The ball at their own 49-yard line. The score, the Steelers 10, the Oilers 7. The Steelers now with two timeouts. Draw play. Ronnie Coleman. Coleman has the first down, gets to the 45-yard line. And Houston immediately calls timeout once again. They're down to one timeout. At the risk of embarrassing my colleague, I'm not sure I could do that right now, but I want to tell you about something that happened to Howard recently. He has received the Pointer Fellowship in Journalism from Yale University. Now, maybe you don't know what that is. I didn't until I found out about it. But it is a very prestigious award offered by that university. It has gone in the past to Tom Wicker, Bob Woodard, Anthony Lewis. And the coach is the first one in sports ever to receive that award. My congratulations, man. Thank you very much. That's high level. Indeed it is. That's not going to make the mayor of Pittsburgh happy. 
He is a little upset with you, Howard. Yes, he's decided that I picked the halftime highlights. Well, I know better. These are matters of grave urban concern. All right. The Oilers, once again, have a first and ten. They're down to one timeout. They have the ball at the 45-yard line for the Steelers. 40 seconds on the clock remaining in the first half. Change up to the line of scrimmage by Pastorini. Has the time and comes off his hand in a funny motion. I don't believe his arm was hit. Intended for Ken Burrow. Incomplete. Stops the clock. 34 seconds. It'll be second down and 10. Pastorini, 8 of 12, 66 yards. Came into the night with only five sacks. He has had none tonight. And believe it or not, four of those came in the very first game. So he's been sacked one time in the past six games. An offensive line, Bob, Towns, Fisher, Samson, Heyman doing a great job for the Oilers. It goes to Rich Caster, and Caster holds on, moves inside the 25-yard line. Castorini uses his last timeout. Remains on the scoreboard. 26 seconds for the Oilers. Well, they're not that far out now, obviously. Scrimmage line between the 24 and 25. So they've got field goal position. The thing about Wide World of Sports coming your way Saturday, 3 at 5 o'clock Eastern, Pacific, 4 o'clock Central Time. The World Gymnastics Championships, a beautiful competition. Of course, it'll be featuring Olympic gold medalist Nadia Komenich. It'll be coming via satellite, same day coverage from Strasbourg, France. The most important gymnastics competition, of course, since the 76 Olympics. Also expected to compete the reigning gym, gymnast of the Soviet Union, Nikolai Andrianov, among other Americans competing, of course, and they're really coming along in gymnastics. Kurt Thomas, Bart Connor, and Kathy Johnson. So, wide world of sports, the World Gymnastics Championships, this Saturday, 5 Eastern, Pacific, 4 Central. Doug Wilson, our Main man is over there for the coverage. Jim McKay, Kathy Rigby Mason will be there. Lord Maddox, Saturday in Wide World of Sports. 26 seconds remaining in the first half. The Oilers down by three, 10 to seven. First and 10, they have no more timeouts. The ball at the 25 yard line of the Steelers. Draw play, and it goes to Ronnie Coleman. And Ronnie Coleman call because there's no way you can stop the clock. The seconds are ticking away. 15 seconds. Inexplicable call. Now this will be a pass. Castorini will try and complete, but he'd be willing to throw it away also, which he does. Killing the clock for six seconds. Inexplicable call when he ran the ball into the middle. Well, I hope he didn't walk over the bench and get that. I don't think Bum would take the credit for that. He'd blame it on the past offensive coordinator who left in the midst of controversy a few weeks ago, Kenny Shep. Hang it on him. <laughs> Tony French, you remember him from his Dallas days, later San Diego. Had a good, strong leg. He's 9 of 11 on the year. He's Isn't well it? within range, Frank. Oh, easily. He's hit from way out this year already, 45, 49 yards. This will be in a 39-yard attempt. We have a tie football game with one second remaining on the scoreboard clock. Well, it's an expansion team, so they are good. That's certainly hitting it on the mark. Tampa Bay, of course, John McKay, they've emerged as strong football team. My Giants over the Washington Redskins. I don't say it in a journalistic way, but you have to have loyalties after you've been somewhere for so long. They have really come along. Okay, Tony Fritz set to kick off with the score tied at 10. Larry Anderson is deep. The sprinter, rookie from Louisiana Tech, a fourth round draft pick. But Fritz will not give it to him. With one second on the clock, he dribbles it along the ground. And the half ends with two tens on the scoreboard. The undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers attempting to remain that way. The four and three Oilers, they know they need this game. Stay tuned. Denver at Baltimore, still another upset. Played at Memorial Stadium, Baltimore, Maryland. And Baltimore held Denver without a touchdown. This kind of play reflective of the Baltimore defense. Morton back to pass, sacked from the rear by 76. Joe Ehrman fumbles, the ball recovered by 72, and alert Fred Cook. 
In the second quarter of the contest, it was three to nothing, Denver. Baltimore ball, third and 15 at the Denver 19. Troop back to pass, watch closely. The ball tipped by Tommy Jackson, number 57, but grabbed by Glenn Dowdy for a Baltimore touchdown. Look at it again. Troop back in the puck. Excellent protection. Going down the middle. Now watch. Tommy Jackson, 57. And Dowdy, after a fumble, clings to the ball. And that was the key play of the game. In the fourth quarter, there was a great climax. Baltimore leading 7-6. to six. And old high shoes Jim Turner with eight seconds left, trying a field goal from the 17. Now watch. The kick blocked by number 63, Mike Barnes. The ball is recovered by high shoes Turner. And he is down by number 30, Doug Neff. And so, Baltimore clung to the victory, 7-6. to six. Now Denver, along with Oakland, is at 5-3 and three in the AFC West. The final unbelievable turn of the day occurred at the Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles. That's Ray Malavese, head coach of the then unbeaten Rams at 7-0. In the second quarter, it was 3-0 New Orleans. And the Rams started to come. Pat Hayden, first and 10 on the Rams, 41. Hits Dwight Scales, number 87. He is quickly down. That set up a Frank Corral field goal that made it 3-3 three three at halftime. In the fourth quarter, it was still unexpectedly from the Rams' point of view at 3-3. Three and three. And there, play action. The throw from Archie Manning to number 34, Tony Galbraith. The lad from Missouri quickly down the sidelines, touchdown. And the startling upset of the formerly unbeaten Rams by New Orleans. The score, 10-3. The, the temperature has plunged to the 30s here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Frank's freezing. I am frozen. I borrowed your old coat. Under any circumstances, Frank, there's been so much talk about violence in football these days and the injuries to the quarterbacks. We felt it important to talk to two key men on the subject, which I did before the game, Jack Lambert and Terry Bradshaw. Terry, do you think there should be any new rules put into play for the safety of the quarterback? Well, I'm one of the few that has spoken out that I've seen enough rule changes in my nine years in NFL for quarterbacks. It's... Uh, uh, something that I believe uh, very firmly and strongly for that uh, quarterbacks an athlete is part of a, a football team. It's an aggressive, uh, sometimes vicious game, and you have to be prepared mentally and physically to to accept that. I know that if uh, older you get, the better in shape I think you should stay. And uh, I know Coach Madden at Oakland has said there should be more done, but I uh, I just feel enough's been said, enough's been written about the violence, especially against quarterbacks, and they all just let it lie and let's play football. Do you think there should be any rules changes for the safety of the quarterback? Well, uh, it might be a good idea to put dresses on all of them. Uh, that might help a little bit. Uh, I got called last week for a late hit on Brian Sipe, and uh, you know, in my opinion, it wasn't a late hit. That's Jack Lambert. You heard a satirical remark. Maybe we should put dresses on them. He's a tough cookie. There's Terry. You heard his views. Just two views. They're not necessarily concurred in by many others. Nonetheless, we thought it interesting because the subject is so topical these days on the professional football scene. We thought it interesting for you to hear their views. Jack Lambert, who looks, Frank, almost like a biblical figure with that beard. Robert <laughs> Tartan Heston reincarnated out there. He doesn't play like a biblical figure. No, he doesn't. That. He is a very emotional player. He's not very big for the spot he plays. He came up second round draft pick of few years ago and he's become one of the best uh, 220 pounds we look at the halftime stats they're fairly even and that is reflected on the scoreboard It's tied at 10 seesaw game as Tony Fritch is set to kick off for the Houston Oilers reminding you once again that Thursday night will be in Dallas the Minnesota Vikings battling back in their central division of the NFC going against the Dallas Cowboys tied with Washington in the NFC East 8.30 Eastern time will Different be the start. Time be with us. That's right, Frank. And Dan DeRoe will be back with us for that one. A look at Larry Anderson. We'll watch it from the end zone. Larry Anderson, the speedster from Louisiana Tech, the fourth round draft pick. He went 95 last week against the Cleveland Browns. He bobbles it again. And 
and this time he pays the penalty for dropping it, and he gets out to about the 18-yard line where the Pittsburgh Steelers will have a first and 10. Art Stringer hustling down there with a special unit team. Now offensively, we anticipate Terry Bradshaw at quarterback, Rocky Blyer and Franco Harris, and we'll see a lot of Sidney Thornton on special running downs. That's when Lynn Swan comes out. Other than that, Swan will be one flanker, 88, Stallworth the other, 82, Randy Grossman, 84, Webster center, Davis Mullins are the guards, Cole and Penny are the tackles. First and 10 from the 18-yard line, Franco Harris. Avoids one oiler, moves out for a five-yard pickup to the 23-yard line. Hit there by James Young, who's part of the 3-4. The front three, of course, Young, Colt, Bethay. Ted Washington, outside linebacker along with Robert Brazil. The inside linebackers, Greg Bingham, Steve Kiner at the corners, Alexander, Stimry, the safeties, Renfeld, and Knopf. On second and five, handoff, Franco Harris. And Harris close to a first down. Rocky Blyer, that is, carrying the ball. Once again, you saw Greg Bingham in on the tackle. First down, Steelers. Randy Grossman, of course, the tight end for the Steelers. First into service when Benny Cunningham went down with an knee injury a couple of weeks ago. Randy Grossman, a, a key figure in the first half as he was being covered by a linebacker. A couple of key receptions. He wears number 84. Rocky Blyer once again. Blyer hit by Young. After a gain of a yard, a yard and a half, it'll be second down, a long eight. <laughs> James Young, 260-pounder. Played in the Continental League out of Oklahoma City in 75. Right out with the Redskins in 76. Didn't make it there, came to Houston last year. Second down, a long eight. Bradshaw will put it in the air. Over the middle is Grossman again. If they mark it where he had the ball, it'll be a first down. Which they are doing, and it is a first down. Once again, you see number 53, Stringer, now in there at the lineback position and on the play. He's been much in evidence tonight on the special teams. Now he goes out, but he's doing a class job tonight. Quality work. Stringer, of course, alternating with Steve Kiner. The first down is at the 39-yard line of the Steelers. Just underway here in the second half. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell, a 10-10 game, a well-played game. Screen to the flanker, Lynn Swan. And a good open field tackle, Kurt Knopf moving in there. Knopf, of course, playing for an injured Bill Courier. And makes a fine play, a very difficult tackle right at the line of scrimmage. There he is, a third-year man out of Kansas. They got him from Denver. He had been a high draft choice by Denver originally. He got his opportunity, as you said, when Curry was hurt at the very start of the game against the Browns. Curry, we understand, is ready to play. Knopf doing a fine job, so Curry will probably get another week's rest. Get out with three with an injured ankle. And here comes Franco, and no place to go. And he'll go down as the flag goes down. But Franco dropped all the way back to the 34-yard line. A loss of five, but flags are down. Robert Brazil there, along with Greg Stenrick. In the last three plays, you've seen Brazil twice. When Blaya carried, he was sandwiched by James Young, whom Frank told you about. There's the signal. Penalty called. Hold against, against the Steelers. And it'll be declined. Decline a penalty. It'll be third down. And Brazil. They were the two who sandwiched Rocky, which is not a happy position to be in. Brazil is all over the field. What he has is incredible speed. He runs a 40 in about 4-6 as Bum Phillips looks on. The penalty declined, of course, following the five-yard loss by Harris. Good defensive play. Stenrick and Brazil. Third and 15. Bradshaw. In a peck of trouble. Unloads it into a crowd downfield. Two receivers once again together. T.O. Bell 
and John Stallworth. Well, he was lucky there was no intercept give. Stringer threw up his arms in chagrin because he had a good shot at it. Once again, number 53 in evidence. Football produces surprising heroes from week to week. And as Billy Johnson moves back to receive the punt, Craig Colpit, a third-round draft pick from Tennessee. And this little man on punt returns led the NFL last year, as he's done a couple of times. He's coming up from Little Widener College. Colquitt tries to kick it away from Billy White Shoes Johnson. He succeeds, and Houston will have the football at their own 30-yard line. Howard and ABC, number one in Pittsburgh, but we are also watching the number one defense in the AFC, the Pittsburgh Steelers, who is second, the Houston Oilers. They're tied at 10. The Steelers undefeated. The Oilers four and three on their season. The hopes of a divisional championship drops out the window, but there are the two wild card spots. The handoff. Earl Campbell and Earl Campbell has a first down out of the 40-yard line to the 42. Jack Ham trips him up. He's back. He appeared slowed after the injury that occurred to him in the first half after scoring the first touchdown. Take a look at this again. But he's back. You can see it on this very play. He had the hole. He got good blocking from number 26, who is, of course, Rob Carpenter. And then you saw him bursting through a tackle and gaining first down yards. He has 47 yards on the night. He ran out of his radials, pops back into them. And goes out for a breather as Ronnie Coleman comes in, number 47. Handoff, Rob Carpenter. And Carpenter met at the line of scrimmage and maybe eases out a yard. It'll be second down and nine. I'll tell you, he got an early hit from Dwight White. L.C. Greenwood also getting up slowly, but White was the first one to suck him. Well, what a remarkable re record these Steelers have had since this stadium opened in 1970. They've only lost two games to Central Division opponents. We mentioned it before. Cleveland and Cincinnati have never won here. The two games they lost were to this team, the Houston Oilers. Second and nine. Ronnie Coleman. Image. Joe Green and Jack Lambert. What a combination they are. <laughs> That's what you call closing it down. Well, two times Green in a row. You, you know, I mentioned his size, Howard Lambert, in the middle of 220. But he's so agile, so strong as we look at him. And the guys that make it possible are Joe Green and Banazak and Furness when he's in there. They keep cutting off the blockers. And Lambert roams along behind that line of scrimmage like a hungry hawk. Third down and eight. This is what the Steeler fans like. That front four will just let it rip. Disregarding the run totally. Good protection. Man open. Complete. And it goes to the tight end, Mike Barber. He has a first down, and he's still on his feet and battling. <laughs> down at the 37. That's a re finally drops him. That's a replay of the way he kept fighting for yardage when he gave up the football in the first half. Remember when Bob Phillips was Bob Phillips was complaining that time should have been called. Same thing. This time he didn't fumble. Howard, when you're we, fighting for yardage, you can't expect them to call the clock dead. Good tight end. We saw him as he came up as a rookie. Second round draft pick out of Louisiana Tech, and he has been something. He missed all of that rookie season with a knee injury, but he came back strong last year, and he has a lot of potential to become one of the top tight ends of the league. The first and 10, 37 yard line of the Steelers. The end of round, Rich Caster. Caster with the great speed has another oiler first down as he runs into Wagner and pushes Wagner back for the first. The Oilers are gushing at this point in time. Mike Wagner. Little bit shaken up on that tackle. That's the second time tonight they've used Castor on the end around. We've talked about that too. He just gobbles up yardage. Look at it again. Good play fake. You saw Campbell barrel in and put on the fake. And here's Wagner, a little man taking on a 230 pounder, and you know who's going to win that contest. Campbell, lone setback for the Oilers. First and 10. The ball at the 26 yard line of the Steelers. The game is tied and passed for any lose of the ball. Sprawls forward and collects it once again, but he'll lose a yard, a yard and a half. It'll be second down at 11. Fortunate to have collected it. Can't afford mistakes like that one. Go to a moment like this. You know, you mentioned the record of the Steelers in this ballpark, Frank. Nine years ago, Dan Darrow and I did the first game the Steelers ever played in this ballpark, a preseason game. 
against the Giants. Talkington was with the Giants. We had him mic'd up. Never allowed to do that again. Second along 11. All at the 27. Hand off Ronnie Coleman. Coleman, the single setback. Moves inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. It's going to be third down and seven. Banizak, 76, Lambert, 58. In on the stop for the Steelers. Look at that grab. Houston, at this point in time, more than holding its own on the ground against Pittsburgh. Remember we told you that the teams that give Pittsburgh the most trouble are the teams that can muster a ground game against them. Third and seven, single setback, the passing offensive unit in for the Oilers. The protection, Pastrini into the pocket, fires over the oh. middle, and the little one, Mike Renfro holds on, first and goal for the Houston Oilers. He really rifled that ball. Now watch this in replay. You'll see Mike Renfro held, held up at the line. There's that one legal chuck in that five yard. The uh, span and now rifled in there. Perfect timing by Pastorini. Blunt and Wagner all over him, but the first down on the Steelers set. And I like the way he comes over the middle. He's 5'11, 184 pounder, the son of Ray Renfro, the former all pro from Cleveland. We hope he's watching tonight. We imagine he is. He has to be proud of this young man. Earl Campbell just pushes the Steeler Iron Curtain back inside the five down to the four yard line. There's Bunk Phillips. Did you get a quick gander at his boots before? Those multicolored things? Part of the Bunk Phillips attire. He sent a pair of those to Frank, but Frank rejected them. <laughs> he has got himself pulled together satirically tonight. <laughs> Second and goal. The ball is at the four-yard line. This game is tied at 10. Two tough football teams playing here this evening. Caster's in motion. Campbell on the play action. The man is wide open, and he doesn't hold on. Mike Barber and Pastorini just a little eager. The entire Steeler defense went for the play fake. He Barber tried. was open. Pastorini didn't get it there. He tried to make an overreach or a bobber here unwittingly. Now, that was touched, though, Frank. Even though he overthrew it, he lofted that football. Third and goal. Remaining in the third quarter. See, saw about it. It's the Houston Oilers who took the Pittsburgh Steelers in the playoffs last year when they beat Cincinnati on the final day of the season. Touchdown. Earl Campbell, his second of the night. The Oilers take the lead. I'll tell you, when this man at 227 pounds gets any kind of a crack in the left side of the line with Greg Sampson spearheading it and Mike Barber, the tight end, blocking, they gave him that crack. He found it, and he just accelerates, maybe not with the incredible speed of an O.J. Simpson in his earlier years, but he can really turn it on. He can. He's got speed and power. Tony Fritch on now. The strength of the big back, the speed of the breakaway back. We're watching two of the finest tonight. Earl Campbell and Franco Harris. Pittsburgh, of course, trying to maintain their undefeated streak. And they now trail the Houston Oilers. The flag is down. The flag is down. Offsides against the Steelers. The conversion stands is 17 to 10 the Oilers. So Houston has not been affected as we look at it one more time by Monday night nerves tonight. Playing the best game they've ever played on a Monday night. They leave the powerhouse Steelers by seven in the third quarter. We'll be right back. Earl Campbell has notched his second touchdown of the night. Campbell with 54 yards on 13 carries. Shaken up. If you were with us in the first quarter, it came back and has provided the Houston punch on the ground. Fritch set to kick off. Deep is Larry Anderson, number 30, the rookie from Louisiana Tech with the blazing speed. And he decides, no, I'll stay here. Touchback the Steelers will have the ball at the 20. Wise decision. There's Earl Campbell, who thus far has carried 13 times for 54 yards. Franco Harris, 10 times for 35 yards. In 
a pregame interview with Frank. He talked about his mom, about his family, about his dreams, and about his love for the game he plays and how he wants to be a complete ball player. Well, his mom has to be happy so far tonight. She's a wonderful lady, and she has to be proud watching tonight. First and ten. The Steelers from their 20. Bradshaw overthrows Len Swan. Wisely so, because Willie Alexander is right there, and while well, we have a break momentarily in the action. We'll pause five seconds and allow our stations along the line to tell you who's bringing this football game to you. You're watching WTAE-TV Channel 4 in Pittsburgh. Terry Bradshaw back into the huddle. Second down of 10, his counterpart of the Houston Oilers. A couple of strong arm quarterbacks and fine athletes, too. This is just a fine football game between two extremely tough football teams. Second down and 10, the Steelers with the ball. 4.56 remaining in the third quarter. This is Franco Harris. Again, trying the left side, and again a loss. But they, again, the great veteran defensive end, having one of his better years in recent years. But the Oilers are stringing that out along the line of scrimmage. Stemmerick coming up from the cornerback, turns it to the inside. Bethay with that great speed, now in his 11th year, still with the strength and the speed. Follows in pursuit twice now. They, in this quarter, have dumped Harris four losses. Fifth man defensively now in the secondary for the Oilers. That's J.C. Wilson, a rookie from Pittsburgh who played his college football right here. On third and 13, Bradshaw to Swan is picked off by Willie Alexander and bobbled. Flag is down, and I think he called it an incomplete. Willie Alexander all over Lynn Swan. It's going to be offensive interference against Lynn. No interception. For the first time tonight in that series of downs. Interference number 88. Decline a penalty. Fourth down. Well, if you're it's going to out. if you're going to have interference, you may as well do it here. Sure. Because save the interception. Save the interception. He got a hand in there. <laughs> Alexander had it for a moment. <laughs> Swan pulled his arm away. Fourth down. Colquitt, the rookie from Tennessee, will kick. Billy Johnson will have an opportunity. He awaits the ball at his 40-yard line. The slow, the kind you run back. Johnson steps out of bounds at midfield, 48-yard punt, but a flag is down again. Well, we'll have to wait for the call on this one. An eligible man downfield once again. All right. And uh, Houston Oiler is also down right at midfield. Can't tell who it is at this point. And we will not speculate as Pastorini tries to decide do we want to try this over again? Or are we have content with field position at midfield? Keep Tom it. Says, stay, stay there, there baby. You saw it. Just stay right there. I was about to say, Frank, on that left. Here's the call. Somebody broke too quickly. An eligible man downfield. Penalty decline. The Oilers will have the football at midfield. They lead. 17 to 10. The injured oiler, Conrad Rucker, on his feet. <laughs> Lance Vaughn, the number one outside receiver in the NFL thus far, came in tonight with 35 receptions, six touchdowns. He hit five, and he got one this evening. But the Oilers are beginning to take command of this game. They have the ball at midfield. They have a first and 10. The quick toss goes out to Rob Carpenter. And Carpenter. Prince to the outside, gets a first down out around the 38-yard line. Mike Wagner took him out of bounds. Frank just mentioned the oil is beginning to take command of this game, and the play you just saw is another evidence of that. The touchdown they scored, of course, the biggest evidence as you look there at young Mr. Carpenter. But I think maybe the most impressive thing at all, from, of all from a Houston point of view was the steal is play, and the play calls on the last series of downs. Pass, run, pass, not good execution, and a beginning, perhaps, more than concern, even panic. And good defensive play on the part of the Oilers as Earl Campbell gets the call and 
sees a hole to the inside, breaks back, picks up six yards. It'll be second down and four. And the thing about Houston, they play the Steelers well, year in and year out, because they are like the Steelers. They're a physical team, and if you're not physical, you're in trouble when you play the Steelers. But they will bring it to you. Well, they've been stringing out that run all night, as you mentioned. The 34 defense or the 30 defense, call it what you will, is supposed to be vulnerable to the run and not the way the Oilers are playing it tonight. Second and four, the ball at the 33-yard line of the Steelers. Rob Carpenter gets to the 30-yard line, short of the first down. It'll be third and one. When you hold Franco Harris to less than 40 yards and you're close to the end of the third quarter, your defense is not just stubborn. And the possession time is beginning to swing in favor of the Houston Oilers. Keep the ball away from the offense. They won't score. Short yardage offense now. The three tight ends. Caster, Rucker, Barber. Campbell, 34. Carpenter, 26. The setbacks. Third, call it two yards as they have marked it now at the 31. Rob Carpenter, quick toss. Sensational play, guess who? Jack Lambert. And Jack Lambert. Well, I thought he was hurt. He was just he was stung for a moment, but he's backs. not gonna let anybody know it, Frank. He's that kind of player. Look at him. The loss is all the way back to the 33-yard line. A loss of three is fourth down and five. And out comes Tony Fritch, I believe. He's in there, and he again has that strong leg. It's going to be a field goal of attempt of about 50 yards. But that play by Lambert was so big. These are the kind that you can get blocked because you have to kick them up, and they run out of time, so that should settle this issue. You have to kick that ball low when you're way out there. You run a great risk of having it blocked. Well, it is too much time. It's marked back to the 38-yard line, and now out comes the punting unit. Parsley from Tennessee, number 18. They, to the they wanted to draw him offside with a very long count. That's, we've seen that time and again in this league. But now the punt, and that play by Jack Lambert may be the spark to ignite this Steeler team. Maybe. Ritter Shan is deep along with T.O. Bell. <laughs> Angling away from the Pittsburgh Steelers receivers. Gets a good Houston bounce. Out of bounds inside the 10 at the 9 yard line. Fine kick by this rookie from Tennessee. Second of the nation a year ago for the Volunteers. Time is out. That's the score. Grand Tarkington against Roger Staubach. Special time, 8.30 Eastern time. Be with us. Thursday night. The Steelers in the hole again, following a Cliff Parsley punt. They'll begin from the nine-yard line. Rocky Blyer. Rolling ahead behind Jerry Mullins and Ray Penny. Had his own 1,000-yard year. Back in 76. Bradshaw on the second and four. Finds a man wide open. It is the tight end again, Randy Grossman. And they are going to have to put somebody on this man. They've been doing it with linebackers. And the Steelers, coaches in the press box, picking it up. And Grossman gets the first down after the 31-yard line. Two excellent play calls. Houston King on and ganging up on Franco Harris, who's been held to less than 40 yards thus far tonight. So the first play to Blyer for the run, six good yards, then the pitch to the tight end. 17 10, the Oilers over the Steelers. Final seconds of the third quarter. Bradshaw to Grossman. Beautiful. And again, they let Grossman run free. He has a first down. He's down to the 47 yard line. The Houston Oilers. Knopf made the stop, but Grossman wide open. And the Steelers now with excellent momentum. To use that to offuse word. Beautiful touchdown. Lofted it to Grossman. Hit immediately, but Randy was where he should have been. Terry threw it where he should have thrown it. And the key play. Up. The flag was down. 
Back where Bradshaw released the ball, and the penalty tacked on following the reception. Here's the call, referee Ben Wright. No foul, roughing the passer, 52, first down. Robert Brazil, who came in on the blitz. The play that turned this around was Jack Lambert saving. First down, Steelers. They have the ball inside the 32-yard line of the Houston Oilers. Eight seconds remaining in the third quarter. This play will be run. Bradshaw went on Lynch. Juan deep. He was covered. He jumps it off to Harris. And Harris does a little nifty footwork and gets down to the 23-yard line. Short of the first down, but a gain of seven. It'll be second down and three when we return. That's the end of the third quarter. Houston, 17, Pittsburgh, 10. And we'll return for the fourth quarter. A lot of action. Stay with us. That's the man who's given Pittsburgh renewed vigor. Jack Lambert, Houston, apparently driving a third and two situation. Lambert getting in and hitting Rob Coppinger for a four to five yard loss. After that, they tried, Houston did, to draw Pittsburgh offside. Fail, cost them five-yard penalty. They punt it, and Pittsburgh has been a different team since getting possession. They're driving inside the 25 of Houston. Get two key completions to Randy Grossman. The Steelers at the 23-yard line, second down and two. They trail by seven. Going again, intended for Lynn Swan, and again defending Mike Reinhold. You saw Lynn look for help from the official, but quite rightly, there was no call of interference. There's Lynn Frank. Did a fine job. Reinfeld did. He spotted Swan coming over, stepped in front of him, eyes on the ball, playing the ball. You can do that. No interference here, just a good defensive play. Beautiful. Third down, two. Got Ball to 23. Got his body and his arms in there. Lynn didn't have a chance. Seesaw battle. We hope you're enjoying it. Steelers and the Oilers. Bradshaw does not like what he sees. Calls a timeout. Timeout, Pittsburgh. Moves over to confer with this man, Chuck Knoll, who's at the Steelers in the playoffs for six straight years, and we'll be back in just a moment. Jim McKay, of course, bringing you the action along with Gordon Maddox and Kathy Rigby Mason. The name is familiar. Well, she was a great gymnast in her own right, married to a great football player, Tommy Mason of the Los Angeles Rams. Well, what a heart he had. The Steelers, a lot of heart also. Third down and two. The ball at the 23-yard line. They trail the Oilers by seven. Getting the call, Rocky Blyer. I do not believe he got the first down. He'll be short. It's going to be first down. Fourth down, a tough decision for the Steelers. He did not get it. You can't second-guess Bradshaw. The call on second down with two yards to go for the first, to go for the works, as he did, was excellent. It was the defensive back, 37, Reinfeldt's anticipation that defeated him on that play, though had he thrown it a touch earlier, he might have completed it to Swanee. Fourth and less than a yard. Steve Carson brought the play in. Short yardage offense. That means Sidney Thornton is in there with Franco Harris and Rocky Blyer. Lynn Swan is out. And the Steelers... Well, apparently had to call, well, they had to call another timeout. Uh, there was a mix-up in their offensive set. Boy, they've used up two of them, and Bradshaw Frank. moves over to talk with Noel. They trail by seven. They have one timeout remaining, 14-28 in the fourth quarter. Only part of the story of a rugged Houston defense that have really turned the Steelers back. The Steelers, a critical decision. They had to use a timeout. Bradshaw did not like what he saw. They have one timeout remaining. They have fourth down, less than a yard to go inside the 22-yard line of the Houston Oilers. On fourth down, throws the ball behind Franco Harris. The Oilers will take over. Curtain off. Running stride to stride with Harris. Bradshaw tried to thread it in, threw it behind. The Oilers have the football in it. This kind of play at this point in a ball game can make a major difference. Let's look again. There they are running stride for stride. Off and Harris. Ball was Had to throw it behind him. Good no. defensive play. Daring call. Good defensive play. Had it worked. They'd have been talking about Park Star all over well, again. Can tell you Chuck Knowles respect for the Houston defense. Third less than a yard. It goes to the air. Rob Carpenter. 
Carpenter hit there by Lauren Taze. Mike Wagner. Gain of four. It'll be second and six. Hey, I'm impressed with this team. How could you not be? They've choked off Franco Harris. We just showed the graphics, the roughing, uh, the rushing figures for the Steelers. Less than 75 yards for the whole ball game. Hey, market. Short of the 28. Second down and five. Earl Campbell slips and down he goes as he does not get back to the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard. It'll be third down and six. Jack Lambert was there, but he just tripped. You know, we mentioned it before, but the Pittsburgh Steelers have only lost two games here at Three Rivers Stadium since this stadium opened in 1970. Both games were to the Houston Oilers, and they are endangered again. Third down, long six. Campbell will be the single setback. Rich Caster is in, number 88. Burrow, double zero. Mike Renfro, 82. Those are the wide receivers on the passing down. Barber's open. And Barber collects the ball and a key passing play. Third down and six, and Pastorini was right on target. First down, Oilers, 49-yard line of the Steelers. I think Pastorini is having by far his best game of the season, don't you, Frank? Well, he's got something going for him he hasn't had in a long time, Howard, and that is a threat of the run with Campbell. He's 12 of 18 on the night, 148 yards. Barber knew he was going to get hit, held on to the football. The Oilers get out of trouble. It was Wagner that hit him? Shell, who jumped over? To the post to the 45 yard line. Again, a three. It'll be second down and seven. 12 minutes remaining in the football game. Cold here in Pittsburgh. Oh, yes. Heater on the sidelines is still another evidence. You know, it was in the upper 50s today. A front came through. It rained. The wind blew. Blustery day. And the temperature started to drop. It's expected to go into the low 30s tonight before the game is over, as a matter of fact. Roy Torella keeping his foot warm for whatever may come. Second and seven. The switch off by Pastorini. Campbell and he finds it open and turns it on. Look out. Gets away from Wagner and finally Shell makes the save at the 22 yard line. And have you ever seen a man? Oh, he's beautiful. Maybe with the exception of Jimmy Brown. I don't think I've seen one at 230 pounds that can do what he does. Agility and speed. Mike Wagner's Still down for the Steelers, but look at this. That is a big man with that kind of a move. I'll tell you, Mike Wagner was down, and Lauren Taves was slow getting up, and is limping back to his position. There's Mike Wagner. He was shaken up early in the game. Stayed in the lineup. He's being attended to. And there well, is your... Now you've got to remember as your leaders in the AFC, right. Campbell making a move, and Dell Williams, of course, in Miami, having just a superb year. Well, he really fits Shula's pattern. That's why Don wanted him so and got him in the trade. He we'll fits. see them against one another later in the season. He fit the, the 49ers pattern rather, rather well also. He sure did. He's a great runner. I agree with that. But the thing to remember about Earl Campbell is he sat out a game against the Cleveland Browns. He's just having a brilliant rookie year. Mike Wagner is having his troubles tonight. He's been in some violent collisions up on his feet. We're always glad to see that. He goes by and he, well, he looks over the Oilers' huddles and nice going, guys. I'll get my breath. I'll be back. Meanwhile, the Oilers have a first and 10. They're at the 22-yard line of the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they have a 17-10 lead. Mike Wagner comes out, the rookie from Louisiana Tech, Larry Anderson, a fourth-round draft pick for the Steelers, in replacing Wagner. Play action fake. Screen to Burroughs, the flanker. Burroughs moves behind a block and moves down close to the 10 yard line. He has another Oiler first down. Anybody watching this Houston team tonight in prime time has to wonder how they've lost three games as you look at the play again. Burroughs sometimes breaks this for great distances and touchdowns. 
In this case, he got enough yardage under the game conditions and circumstances. But Houston lost one they had in hand, they thought, against Oakland. They feel they should have beaten the Rams in a tough, tense contest. Atlanta had a clear-cut victory over them, in the, over them in the opening game of the season. Second and goal. Rob Carpenter takes off one stealer, runs into Jack Ham, but still pulls forward to the five-yard line. Ah, tempers flaring. Lows being exchanged ineffectively. Up and a flag flies. And it is not the place to have penalties. Flag is down. They wait for the call. Carpenter got to the five yard line. And it's going to be stepped off against the Steelers. For either team, not the place to have a penalty. We could not hear the call, but it's a personal foul against one of the Steelers. And the jut jaw Chuck Noll, as you just saw him, didn't like it a bit, but Bum Phillips, understandably, growingly serene. First and goal. Ball is inside the three-yard line. Campbell has scored two touchdowns from in close already tonight. Oh, and he is pounded and driven back. Joe Green. What a hit. And Jack Ham. And 59. Right. What a hit. Dwight White was the guilty stealer on the play before. Mike Wagner, as you see, back in the ball game. And I think it, it might have been Wagner who made that violent collision. Let's take a look at it again. Campbell cutting back on the block of Rob Carpenter. And it was Wagner. Who weighs 200 pounds, taking on the 227-pound Earl Campbell. Second and goal. Caster in motion. The ball is all hacked loose from Rob Carpenter. Carpenter hit hard. exceptional football team but we told you at the very beginning of our telecast Houston habitually plays the Steelers tough habitually Bradshaw has had his most difficult time against them. 
Look at the Oilers scoring drive. Nine plays, 78 yards. 19 carries for Earl Campbell, 87 yards. Debris on the field, holding the contest up. But we're about ready to resume. And here, once again, the gipper for the call of the kickoff. Fritz will kick. Larry Anderson is inside his five-yard line, the speedster. As a collegian, a couple of touchdowns at Louisiana Tech of 100 yards. He went 75 last week against Cleveland. He accepts the ball at the six. A nifty move, and he gets to the outside. And Pittsburgh, good field position. Anderson all the way to midfield. Bill Courier picks him out of bounds there. Exactly what the steal is needed to rekindle their hopes and exactly what an exceptional football team does when its back is against the wall. There's Larry Anderson. As Frank told you earlier, he broke a big one, 95 yards against the Browns last week. That was a 45-yard return. Swan is right. Stallworth is left. The Steelers are down 14. Bradshaw knows he's going to have to have a quick one. Grossman over the middle. He's been open all night. Drop for an eight-yard pickup. It'll be second down and two. Curtain off there. Now they mark it right at the 42. It'll be second down and one. The seconds ticking off for the Steelers in their hopes to remain the only unbeaten team in the NFL. Seven straight. They were zipping along through the schedule until they met the Oilers tonight. A fired-up bunch of Houston Oilers and... Look at that play by Robert Brazil as he dumps Franco Harris behind the line of scrimmage, a loss of one. I'll tell you, the job they've done on Franco tonight has just been unbelievable. He still does not have a total of 40 yards gained. In 12 carries, he's gained net 31 yards. Now, when can you remember that happening to Franco Harris ever since he came into this league? Third down three, the ball at the 43-yard line. Bethay jumps off. He did not get back. Bradshaw has a three pass. Goes out to Rocky Blyer. Blyer has the first down at the 35-yard line. Tackled by Willie Anderson. Earl Campbell. A tough sledding 87 yards tonight. Tough right. But he came back from being hurt after bursting over for the first touchdown of the night. Hi, Earl. Hi, Mom, he said. And that's a kid who means it. All right, 65, decline a penalty. That's first down. Now, with nine minutes left, Frank, the Steelers must score quickly. From their point of view, kick off, recapture the football, and score again against this Houston team. Not easy. Well, you wouldn't have to score that quickly, Art. I said it earlier because Terry Bradshaw knows the kind of game he's in. He's got to get something big. Franco Harris draw play, and Harris erupts for nine yards. Ted Washington made the stop. Ted Washington, his first, well, second call tonight. He's one of those guys who sometimes emerges. A 14th round draft choice originally. Houston got him from the Jets for Warren Cable. And he's been a fixture at linebacker ever since. Seconds ticking away, 8.30 on the clock. Second down on a long one. It goes to Rocky Blair, he has the first down. He's down to the 22-yard line. But the Steelers are using a lot of time. It was Washington again on the stop. There he is again. We'll get him in there. Not a tall man. In fact, he's short as linebackers go, 6'1", bulky, 245 pounds. The Steelers, first down, 23-yard line of the Oilers. They trail by 14. Swan goes far to the right. Stallworth is in the slot. Play action fake. Bradshaw wants Swan. He defines it in the oh. end of the touchdown. Flag is down, but I believe it was roughing against Bradshaw. Maybe not. It's going to come back. Lance Swan took it away from the Houston defense. Willie Alexander, Ryan Felt were defending. 
Brazil was also back there, but the penalty is going to be assessed against the Steelers. The fans don't like it a bit. Offensive holding number 55. John Cole, the best of the offensive linemen. Guilty of the holding infraction for the Steelers, and it cost the Steelers a touchdown. I was about to say that the Steelers had come back with glass, and they still may. This is a great football team. Not just good, but great. You can score from anywhere when you have Lynn Swan and Stallworth on the field, as we just saw. First down and 20. Bradshaw. This is the football. Gray Penny, as he has, as earlier in the game, was there for the recovery. But the loss is back to the 44-yard line. At the college level, Penny, as you look at him now, was a center. And he can still double in brass. As an offensive lineman, one center. It's going to be second down and 32 yards. Now, if you're quarterback, what you want to do is... Not panic in this. You want to get some of it back, knowing that you have another down to work with. Oilers naturally into their five-man defensive prevent. Rookie J.C. Wilson in in the secondary, laying well off. Bradshaw, a lot of running room. Oh, and Brazil upends Bradshaw. Oh. Flag goes down. Flags all over the line. Mike Webster. He covers the football. The flags are down all over the line. An oiler is down. I think they probably called. Did it look like a late hit to you after he was down? Well, Brazil, Brazil is, is down. down. We'll look at it again. I wonder about Washington, number 59. It well, wasn't Brazil. He came in with a cutting tackle. Upended Bradshaw. He dropped the football. Webster recovered it. Let's watch now. Watch close. Brazil will up in Bradshaw. Right there. Cutting block. And a spearing call, I'm sure, will go against Greg Stenry. 27. Greg Stenry coming oh. in. Helmet first. That's the call. Washington Personal came in late. Foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense. First down. And the necessary roughness call is going to give the Steelers a first down at the 14-yard line. Let's look again. Bradshaw's on the ground. And the call is aptly labeled unnecessary roughness, Greg Stemmery. Mike Pruzic comes in for the Steelers as Bradshaw will shake it up. We'll try and get a report. Bradshaw came up after the tackle, walked off the field, and in comes Mike Pruzic. This year hasn't made anything but token appearances, but he had a great preseason. You remember him from Boston College. Tops in the history of the NCAA in passing percentages. Came in two years ago, won six games in the Streeter's streak of nine consecutive victories. He's quarterbacking now. Hands off to Franco Harris. Now this team is alive. The way Pittsburgh fans have grown accustomed to them. There's Terry on the sideline. And he'll be coming back in rather obviously. Just shaking up. Maybe right now, maybe after another play. But time becomes a factor. 6.25 left. Here's the crowd. Bradshaw back in the ball game. 6.15 and it's moving. Franco Harris picked up six yards. A second down and four. The ball on the nine-yard line. Rocky Blyer met at the line of scrimmage, maybe surge forward for a yard. I think. Well, he's within two yards of a first down, Jim. Long two down in this end of the football real estate. And a tough Houston defense, Chuck Noll. Super job. Came in in 1969. First year, would you believe it? He won one game. And it was a gradual improvement. They've been in the playoffs six consecutive years, two Super Bowl championships, trying to remain undefeated. Third down, long two. Bradshaw, a lot of time, no receiver. Finds one, guess who? Lynch one. Of course, he's always there. 
the best combination for the production of touchdown via the aerial route in the National Football League. On the record, so. Bradshaw to Lynn Swan. And with five minutes and 20 seconds left, Pittsburgh seeks to convert. The key item is the Steelers have blown two timeouts that they've had to call. Roy Girella comes on. They have one timeout remaining. Swan's seventh touchdown of the season. Second of the night. Girella puts the Steelers to within seven points. Let's watch again. The key thing here was just Bradshaw. Good coverage by the Oilers. A lot of time. No receiver open. Move to the right. Spot Swan, who very wisely continued to move and gave Bradshaw a passing play. Now you watch Swan. He knows he's covered, but he knows he has to continue to move to make sure that he'll give Bradshaw a passing play. He does just that. Bradshaw firing back with his strong arm, makes the completion, touchdown, the Steelers are back in the game. 20 remaining in the game. 24-17, the Oilers over the Steelers. The Oilers looking for an onside kick. And they're going to get it. Has to go 10 yards. The Steelers have the ball. Beautifully executed by Torella. It came across spinning. It was not handled by the Oilers. Jack Delaplane, who was just picked up a couple of weeks ago. After he was cut from Washington, he came up originally with the Steelers. They brought him back to He's special teams, and he paid the price right here. He's been all over the place, Della Plain. Played in the World Football League. Had a shot with the Steelers. Another look at it. What perfect execution. The ball bouncing over a Houston Oiler in the front line. That is not all luck. Ted Thompson. That is not all luck. Dorella practices that. That ball was spinning. Very difficult to hold. First and ten Steelers, down by seven from their own 46-yard line. Bradshaw to the air. Grossman, first down, Steelers. 41-yard line of the Oilers. Well, I don't know if the Steelers are going to tie this game or not. But right now, they're showing everything that you'd want of a championship football team. They're playing football the way they did when they won two consecutive Super Bowls. They're playing against a tough, stubborn team that has beat tonight against the Steelers team. That may contain the Steelers now, but what a football game. Grossman, seven receptions on the night. He came in the entire season thus far, only had five. Grossman again. Eighth reception of the night. He's been the factor. Mark Springer made the stop, but it's another first down for the Steelers, and more important, they kill the clock. Let's look at Grossman isolated. Playing in place of Benny Cunningham and Larry Brown, both of whom are sidelined. A projected weak spot he's been anything but, as Frank has detailed. Eight receptions already. And you would think they would pick up the fact they cannot cover him as a linebacker. They are doing it, trying to do it throughout the entire night. That time, Art Stringer tried to stay with him and couldn't. Sidney Thornton in there now, number 38, and Frank O'Hara's 32. 429 remaining in the game. A tip to Grossman, oh, gets the deflection. When you're hot, you're hot. We have seen a number of tipped and deflected passes this year. As you look at the emotions in that stern face of Bum Phillips, we have seen a number of deflected and tipped passes this year like we've never seen before. Watch this one. Off the arms of Stringer, into the arms of Grossman. Look what I found says Grossman, his ninth reception for 118 yards tonight. Good lawn, and you saw Stringer, the arms up, flung in disgust with himself. He's been all over the place tonight, Stringer. Bradshaw calls for Platt. Sets his team, first and ten, the ball at the 15. Bradshaw throws a right into the arms of Kurt Knopf. Oh, Terry. Picture will tell you more than any words could ever say. There it is. The dejection that only a quarterback can know. Three minutes, 31 seconds left on the clock. The Steelers with only one timeout remaining as you look again. Bradshaw moving up into the pocket, feeling pressure. 
looking for Swan, who was covered by Kurt Knott, who was himself a replacement for Bill Curry. First interception of the game, and what an interception it was. Campbell, and he has been told to hold on to the football because the Steelers will be trying to claw it out of there. But Terry Bradshaw's first interception in, in 68 throws. So he's not been prone to the intercept this year. But when it came, it came at the worst possible time for the Steelers. Boy, it was a beauty. Terry looking around, could not find the receiver, tried to dump it to Swan, threw it right in the hands of Knopf, and the seconds took away. Steelers, having wasted two timeouts, can do nothing about it. Oilers will run it down. Pasturini watching the end zone, 30-second clock, tick away. He gets this playoff, second and nine, with three seconds remaining. Rob Carpenter. Banazak in on that stop, Bradshaw on the sidelines. With the clock, more and more of a factor as you look at Bum Phillips and his face, and he's looking at the clock. And with the fact that the Steelers have only one timeout, more and more of a factor, should the Steelers lose, there will be no unbeaten teams in the National Football League at the halfway point of the season. So in truth, the old propaganda line finally rings out. Any team can beat any other team on any given day. And I guess that makes it not propaganda. Third down and eight. Campbell up in it at the 10, short of the first down, of course. And a two-minute warning. Both benches notified. The Steelers will get the football on the punting exchange. They'll have one timeout. There'll be a good field position. Little time to work with. In zone, Randy Rudishan is deep for the Steelers. One minute, 59 seconds on the scoreboard clock. The Steelers have one timeout. Parsley, good kick. T.O. Bell moves back to take it at his own 42. And T.O. Bell still on his feet. Gets out of bounds. Now that was a classy performance by that young man. Parsley got off by far his best kick of the night. Parsley as a punter, one of Houston's weak links, averaging only 36 yards a punt. But not that time. Still the effectiveness of the punt nullified by that return by Bell, who kept his senses, and when there was no place further to go, got out of bounds to stop the clock. Still a football game. Bradshaw acutely aware he has one timeout. There will be a hurry-up offense. If you get the completion, you get back to the huddle. We've already called a play. Swan far to the right, Stalwart to the left. Franco Harris. Harris inside the 35, short of the first down for 34. Here comes the Pittsburgh Steelers with the seconds ticking away. 1.30, the clock is moving. The play has already been called. We call two plays in the huddle in this two-minute speed-up offense. It's a draw play to Harris. And what a surprising call. Bradshaw still is not going to call timeout. A good call. Franco might have broken that even further with a little bit of luck. But Houston's been so stubborn all night, they're holding together. This will be a pass play. Bradshaw will kill the clock with it. He'll go for the completion. If he doesn't get it, he'll kill the clock. Over the middle, intended for Stallworth, and he is drilled there by Mike Reinfeld. Reinfeld. And it'll be second and ten. The clock, of course, stopped with the incompletion. Boy, I'll tell you, you've got to be a great receiver to concentrate when you know you're going to be popped like this. See it again. Stalwart coming off a big year. Last year, 40 receptions. And has opened up the season with another good year. Came in with 21 receptions over a 19-yard average. Held his poise. Clock stop. It has 58 seconds. On second and 10, Bradshaw back again. Fires for Grossman and Grossman this time. Picked up by Greg Stimmery, covered well. Bradshaw could not hit him. Chuck uh, Knoll is yelling because he thought Grossman was interfered with, but no sign of a flag anyway. So it gets tighter and tighter. 54 seconds left. 
Don't think that Bum Phillips doesn't feel the tension either. Third and ten. Now the Steelers not only concerned with the clock, they have to be concerned with a first down. Field goal will not do it. They're down by a touchdown and a conversion. Oh, they've got two downs left. Bradshaw. A lot of running room. He gets the first, first down. down. He calls his final timeout. Oh, what a finish. 44 seconds left on the clock. You know, you get the feeling that Terry loves this. Now, Through the interception, he knows he should never have thrown a knob earlier. He's got a reprieve, a second chance, if you will. Terry drops back. Spots the opening. He's a good athlete. He has not been running much this year, but in this situation, he pulls it down. Does his little hook slide. Stays out of harm's way, and while lying prone on the ground, signaled for his final timeout. They are, of course, playing for overtime. Still unbeaten. The only unbeaten team left in the league. We're at the midway point of the expanded 16-game schedule. In overtime in 1978, should this game go into it, Cleveland beat Cincinnati 13 to 10. Minnesota beat Denver 12 to 9 on a Monday night. Pittsburgh beat Cleveland 15 to 9. Denver beat Kansas City. Oakland beat Chicago. Dallas beat St. Louis. That's the overtime action thus far this year. Bradshaw comes back into the huddle. He's been talking with Chuck Noll. They've been consulting with coaches in the press box. The big play for them has been their pass to Randy Grossman, who has been covered most of the game with the linebacker. You saw a moment ago, however, Houston has changed. They had Greg Stimrick with Grossman. And other than that, the Steelers have not found anything weak at all about this Houston defense. So let's see what they come with. They cannot stop the clock anymore. No timeouts. And are almost picked off by Knopf once again, intended for Swan. I'll tell you, that Knopf is playing a tough game as Curry is replaced. He really is. He's watching Swan like a hawk. He's anticipating and when you see him come in here. See that? Oh, and would he have liked to have corralled that ball? And he should have. Second and 10, 39 seconds remaining in regulation play. 24-17, the Oilers over the Steelers. Bradshaw with one completion of the last five attempts said, Houston calls timeout. What? They want to talk it over. They're not stopping the clock, of course. Greg, well, Bingham, the man who calls the defense, moves over. Choose the fat with the coaches on the sidelines. I don't Ed Biles, the defensive coordinator there, he's the short man. Bum Phillips taking it all in. Meanwhile, Bradshaw, the offensive captain, at least at this moment, moves over to confer with Chuck Noll. I'd like your explanation of that call with the clock running down at 39 seconds. <laughs> well, it wasn't running down, of course, and Bingham just wanted to go over and make sure we're in the right thing. The right. timeouts mean nothing. The incomplete pass had stopped the clock. So it wasn't running down, but... Bradshaw back into the lineup. Well, he Bell comes in. He's in there with Lynn Swan, Don Stallworth, Franco Harris comes out. Well, Franco Harris remains the one setback. Wire comes out. Swan to the right. Stallworth to the left. Theo Bell in the slot. Going for T.O. Bell. Good defensive play by Stemrick, who's been superb tonight. Watch it. It'll come right at you. T.O. Bell came down, drove to the inside, broke it off. Stemrick right with him all the way. The fourth-year man out of Colorado State. Well, he's an old WFLer from the Chicago Fire. Two downs left. Third down. Hand off up the middle. Steelers 
Bears cannot stop the clock, of course. They've called another play in the huddle. Well, I'd like to be able to have that one explained. This is it. They need a touchdown. They can get a first down if they can get inside the four-yard line. No. Incomplete. The Oilers take over 10 seconds on the clock, and they, for all intents and purposes, have won this football game. This has been a terrific football game. You've seen it for yourselves. Swan tried to pull a miracle lab, but he couldn't. Our thanks to our spotter, Steve Bazinka. Our statistician, Jerry Klein, they've been busy tonight. Tell you, too, the executive producer, as always, of ABC Sports is Ruin Arledge. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football is produced by Dennis Lewin, directed by Chet Forty, our technical director, Bill Morris, associate director, John DeLisa, technical manager, coach, Coltrane, Unit manager Dennis Zabo, and we hope you've enjoyed NFL football at its finest tonight. Two stubborn football teams. This will be the final play of the game. The Steelers cannot stop the clock. Dan Pastorini drops to his knees. The flag is down. Or it was just dropped apparently by official. No, now they have stopped the clock. Campbell on the night. Not bad, Howard. 21 carries, 89 yards. The most gained by any back is the game in rush. Most gained by any back against the Steelers thus far this season. A brilliant performance by the brilliant rookie. And there is no undefeated team in the National Football League as the season's halfway mark comes to an end. And the Houston Oilers will be heard from along the way. Once again, the final score, Houston 24, the Pittsburgh Steelers 17. Be sure to join us this Thursday night. Now, that's Thursday night at 8.30. That's a different time. Eastern.